Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In a previous lecture of EC 2026 Introduction to Signal Processing, we looked at signals that consisted of sinusoids whose frequencies were piecewise constant. In this lecture, we'll look at sinusoids whose frequencies change continuously over time and observe some counterintuitive effects. To motivate this lecture, I'm going to try something in MATLAB. Well, actually, I'm using Octave right now. And I'm going to show you this doesn't work. So let me set a sample rate. And I'm going to set up a time variable to create a four second signal. Now, what I want to do is create a sinusoidal wave that changes continuously in frequency in a linear fashion from 500 hertz down to 100 hertz. So let me write f equals 500 minus 100t. And this doesn't actually work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this f want to indicate that that's the frequency that I want to hear at any given point of time. Let's see, that should be tt. So at time equals 0, this is 500. At time equals 4, I'll get 500 minus 100 times 4, 500 minus 400, which would give me 100. So ideally, this should go from 500 to 100. And just to emphasize that, let me plot f want. So 500 going down to 100. That's what I want. OK, so let's create a waveform xx cosine 2 pi f want times tt. And here, f want and tt are both vectors, so I need to have the period here. And now let's listen to it. Whoa, it went down, but then it went back up. Let's listen to that again. So what's going on here? So we're now going to think about functions with a generic angle function psi of t. This can be fairly flexible. Often it may embed a signal that we want to encode and transmit. Now what I'm showing here is technically not frequency modulation as you would think about it on your FM radio. This is technically phase modulation. The voice is being manifest as this phase term here. But phase modulation essentially implements a kind of frequency modulation. This all gets really complicated. We usually don't get into it in a huge amount of detail in EC 2026, but I just want to give you the gist of things. We'll need the idea of the instantaneous frequency of a sinusoid, which you get by taking the derivative of the angle function psi. That gives you the instantaneous frequency in radians per second. If you want it in hertz, you need to divide by 2 pi. Now, as a sanity check, Let's see what is the instantaneous frequency of a constant frequency sinusoid. Well, it's easy enough to take the derivative of this function here. It's just 2 pi f naught. The phase goes away. So this definition matches our intuitive understanding of what the frequency in radians per second should be. This is a linear function of time. What if we have a quadratic function of time? So if we take the derivative of psi, we get 2 alpha t plus beta. And this explains the weirdness we found earlier in the MATLAB slash octave example, where it sounded like the frequency went down and went back up. If I factor out a t from these first two terms and match things up, this minus 100 is like alpha, and this 500 is like beta. The intuition shown in my previous example essentially assumed that this 2 wasn't there. Now, with our deeper knowledge of the fact that there's this factor of 2 there, I can patch my example. Let's take this 100 and divide it by 2 to compensate for that 2. So, creating the waveform again with this new f want, let's listen to the revision. That's better. Essentially, earlier when I didn't have the division by 2 here, as far as the frequency I wanted, 
there is a multiplication by two in the second term that I didn't know about. And that meant that the instantaneous frequency dropped faster than I was intending. It dropped so fast that over the course of the time of the waveform, it actually hit zero in frequency and then started to go negative. And then those negative frequencies folded over. Again, remember the formula shown here is in radians per second. You need to divide by 2 pi if you want it in hertz. Here's an example of an upward going chirp along with its spectrogram. Its instantaneous frequency runs from 200 hertz to 1800 hertz. An excellent exercise is to see if you can write a MATLAB function that produces that chirp. Suppose the angle function psi itself also has a cosine in it. When we take the derivative, the derivative of the cosine is minus sine. But notice that this beta shows up in front according to the chain rule. So the sweep that you get in the instantaneous frequency depends not just on this alpha, but on this frequency beta inside of here. Now, if you implement this in MATLAB and plot the spectrogram of it, it would look something like this, because all of the negative going parts of this wave fold over. And as I mentioned before, psi can include all kinds of information. Here's an example of a siren kind of sound. So the spectrogram looks like a sinusoid. And in my more devious moments, I sometimes put a question on a final exam where I show a spectrogram like this and ask the student to find the associated formula. Let's look at the DSP First website, scroll down to chapter 3, and take a look at these example spectrograms. In particular, let's look at some chirp sounds. Okay, you've heard this kind of thing before already. Let's look at this up down modulated chirp. It'll go up, go down, go back up. That was exciting. I should mention that for these three synthetic chirp signals, the MATLAB code is available. So you can click on that and check that out. But now let's listen to this example of real birds. I should mention the sound clip is longer than the actual spectrogram shown here. But anyway, you can imagine manually looking at the spectrogram extracting some parameters from it, and trying to synthesize that sound in MATLAB. Now, in all of the examples in this lecture, the instantaneous frequency changed slowly enough that you actually perceived it as a changing frequency. If you create some kind of frequency modulation scheme where you start cranking up the frequency of modulation, eventually you don't perceive that frequency variation anymore. You get to the point where you perceive entirely new kinds of timbres. That's the technique used in something called FM synthesis, made famous by the Yamaha DX7, and we'll talk about that next time.